Did you know that Taylor Swift and Kanye West have been feuding ever since the rapper interrupted her at the MTV Awards? Get ready for the ultimate celebrity drama. From the heated rivalry between Madonna and Lady Gaga, this video will take you through the 20 most epic celebrity feuds of all time. Let's watch it, it's fascinating. Taylor Swift vs. Kanye West The night of the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards will forever be etched in music history. In the climactic moment of the ceremony, when Taylor Swift, a young and promising singer, took the stage to receive the award for Best Female Video for her song You Belong With Me, an unexpected event shocked the audience. Kanye West, one of the most influential rappers of the time, interrupted the celebration, grabbing the microphone to declare that Beyonce, with her video Single Ladies, put a ring on it, had made one of the best music videos of all time. The reaction from the public and celebrities was swift. From Katy Perry to then-President Barack Obama, many expressed their disapproval of the rapper's behavior, with most of the criticism directed at West. Beyonce, visibly affected by the incident, later confessed that she had cried watching Taylor being humiliated in public. A year later, Kanye attempted to make amends with a public apology on Twitter. However, Taylor Swift responded with her song, Innocent, a ballad that many interpreted as a subtle critique of the rapper. Despite this gesture, the tension between the two artists seemed to have eased, and for several years, they maintained a cordial relationship, although they never became friends. However, the truce didn't last long. In 2016, Kanye released the controversial single Famous, which included a lyric directly referencing Taylor Swift in a derogatory way. The situation escalated further when Kim Kardashian, Kanye's wife at the time, posted on social media a recording of a phone conversation between the two artists in which Taylor allegedly gave her consent to be mentioned in the song. This sparked a new wave of criticism towards the singer, who was accused of lying. The release of this recording in 2020 reignited the controversy and proved that the rivalry between the two singers was far from over. Over more than a decade, this feud has generated countless headlines and divided the fans of both artists. Beyond the music, this dispute has highlighted the toxicity of fame and the importance of treating others with respect, even in such a competitive industry as entertainment. Michael Jackson vs. Prince The 80s witnessed one of the most intense rivalries in music history. Michael Jackson vs. Prince Both artists, with their distinct but equally revolutionary musical styles, dominated the pop scene of the decade and became cultural icons. The success of both was undeniable. Michael Jackson, with albums like Thriller and Prince, with gems like Purple Rain, achieved record-breaking sales and revolutionized the music industry. Their songs topped charts worldwide and their music videos set new standards in television history. However, shared success also fueled intense rivalry. Constant comparisons between the two artists inevitably created tension. Michael Jackson, in particular, was annoyed when compared to Prince, arguing that his career had started much earlier with the Jackson 5. The rivalry reached its peak in 1983 during a performance with James Brown. While Jackson received thunderous applause, Prince attempted to grab attention by swinging from a lamp, which led to a dramatic fall. Jackson took the opportunity to mock his rival, further escalating the tension. Despite the rivalry, the King of Pop often expressed admiration for Prince's music. He even proposed a duet on the song Bad, but Prince declined due to his ego and desire to be recognized as the main artist. Michael Jackson's death in 2009 marked the end of this rivalry. Ironically, the day of the King of Pop's death coincided with the anniversary of Purple Rain. In a gesture of respect, Prince paid tribute to his former rival by performing Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, one of Jackson's biggest hits. Vin Diesel vs. Dwayne Johnson the Fast and Furious saga has been synonymous with friendship, family, and adrenaline. However, behind the scenes, the eighth installment of this successful franchise was marked by a fierce dispute between two of its stars, Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel. During the filming of Fast and Furious 8, The Rock took to social media to express his displeasure with one of his co-stars, without mentioning him directly. In a message laced with irony, the actor stated, Some conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, while others don't. Johnson continued to express his frustration, 
stating that in some scenes, his anger was real and not acted. The identity of the actor Johnson was referring to didn't take long to be revealed, Vin Diesel. This public discord created a huge stir among fans of the franchise, who wondered what had triggered this clash between two of Hollywood's biggest stars. Shortly after, Dwayne posted a message on Instagram thanking almost the entire cast and production crew for their work on the film, noticeably omitting Vin Diesel from the list of acknowledgements. This gesture only served to confirm the tensions between the two actors. Amid growing speculation from the media and fans, Vin Diesel decided to break his silence and address the situation publicly. The actor who plays Dominic Toretto claimed that he had resolved his differences with Dwayne Johnson and expressed his gratitude for The Rock's contribution to the franchise. However, Diesel's statements did not completely quell rumors about a possible rivalry between the two actors. Madonna vs. Lady Gaga Lady Gaga's arrival on the music scene in the late 2000s sparked inevitable comparisons with Madonna, the undisputed queen of pop. While both artists shared an extravagant aesthetic and a defiant attitude, their relationship was marked by rivalry rumors from the beginning. The first signs of tension emerged in 2011 when Lady Gaga was accused of plagiarizing Madonna's song Express Yourself with her hit Born This Way. Although Gaga strongly denied these accusations, Madonna made disparaging remarks about the song, further fueling rumors of a dispute between the two artists. Madonna later revealed that this was the only episode in which she had a problem with Lady Gaga. While acknowledging the young singer's talent, the Queen of Pop expressed her disappointment at seeing such a talented artist resort to copying one of her most iconic tracks. For her part, Gaga responded to these criticisms by expressing her admiration for the veteran artist, regardless of her opinions about her. However, the bad romance singer also expressed her frustration at how Madonna handled the situation, noting that she would have preferred if the Queen of Pop had addressed her complaints directly, instead of doing so publicly. Miley Cyrus vs. Nicki Minaj Miley Cyrus's transformation from a Disney star to a provocative pop artist, marked by the release of her album Bangers, coincided with Nicki Minaj's meteoric rise in the music scene. Both singers, with their bold styles and charismatic personalities, quickly became undisputed queens of urban pop, which inevitably led to constant comparisons between them. These comparisons, though inevitable, soon became a source of tension and rivalry. Negative comments and speculation about a supposed competition between Miley and Nicki began circulating in the media and on social media, and the situation escalated further when Nicki Minaj's music video for Anaconda outpaced Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball in views within its first 24 hours, solidifying the rapper's dominance in the music world. The tension between the two artists peaked during the MTV Video Music Awards when Nicki Minaj expressed her frustration that her music video wasn't nominated for Video of the Year, while Miley's was. In a series of tweets, the rapper openly criticized MTV and the media, suggesting there was a bias against artists of color. The former Disney star responded to Nicki's criticism with her song, Catitude, which included the controversial line, I love you, Nicki, but I listen to Cardi. Many interpreted this line as a direct provocation toward Nicki Minaj, implying that Cardi B's music was superior to the rapper's. Britney Spears vs. Christina Aguilera The rivalry between Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera is one of the most iconic in pop music history. Emerging in the late 90s when both were child stars on the Mickey Mouse Club, this competition intensified as their careers took off and they became the undisputed queens of pop in the early 2000s. The rivalry was further fueled by the appearance of Justin Timberlake on the music scene. Rumors of a love triangle involving Britney, Christina, and Justin added to the rivalry and created a narrative of constant competition between the two singers. Through the media, the two divas threw jabs and comments that stoked the flames of their dispute. One of the most memorable moments was when Christina Aguilera referred to Britney Spears as a lost girl who desperately needs guidance. However, the dynamic of the rivalry changed as both artists went through different stages in their lives. In 2008, Britney experienced a turbulent period marked by personal and professional problems. In response, Christina took a more empathetic stance and publicly acknowledged her rival's talent. Their relationship seemed to improve, but in 2021, a new controversy revived the old rivalry. 
When Britney was finally freed from the legal conservatorship imposed by her father, Christina expressed her joy for this news. However, the eternal pop princess felt disappointed by the lack of more personal and direct support from her former rival. This episode highlighted that, despite attempts at reconciliation, the tension between them still lingers. Kim Cattrall vs. Sarah Jessica Parker The series Sex and the City introduced us to four inseparable friends navigating life in New York City. However, behind the scenes, the relationship between the actresses playing these iconic characters was not as idyllic as it seemed. In particular, the rivalry between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall has been a subject of speculation and debate for years. Rumors of underlying tension between the actresses began to surface during the show's run. While they projected an unbreakable friendship on screen, behind the scenes, salary discrepancies and inflated egos began to create friction. At that time, it was reported that Sarah Jessica Parker received a significant salary increase, which caused resentment in Kim Cattrall, who felt her contribution to the show's success was not being recognized fairly. The situation worsened during the production of the films based on the series. Although both actresses agreed to appear in the first two movies, the tension between them was evident on set. It is said they barely spoke outside of scenes, creating a tense and uncollaborative work environment. The turning point came when Kim's brother passed away. Sarah Jessica publicly expressed her condolences on social media, but Kim responded firmly, denying any friendship or connection with her co-star. Her resentful words made it clear that the relationship between them was irreparably damaged. This incident had a significant impact on the Sex and the City franchise. Kim's refusal to participate in a third film led the producers to reimagine the story without Samantha Jones's character. Additionally, the tension between the actresses became a constant topic of media conversation, generating much anticipation and curiosity among the show's fans. Backstreet Boys vs. NSYNC the 90s witnessed the rise of boy bands, and no rivalry defined this era more than the one between the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Both created by the same manager, Lou Pearlman, these bands shared a similar origin, but quickly became the central figures in a battle for the hearts of millions of teenagers. The story of both bands began with a newspaper ad. In 1993, Nick Carter, Howie Doro, Kevin Richardson, and A.J. McLean responded to a call and formed the Backstreet Boys. Soon after, Brian Littrell, Kevin's cousin, joined the group. NSYNC emerged two years later, featuring Justin Timberlake, JC Chases, Chris Kirkpatrick, Lance Bass, and Joey Fatone. Despite their modest beginnings, both bands achieved overwhelming success. The Backstreet Boys sold over 75 million albums and embarked on world tours that drew millions of fans. NSYNC also made a significant impact, with their debut album selling over 15 million copies. The competition between the two bands was fierce. The media and fans were divided, each defending their favorite group. The Backstreet Boys were seen as the bad boys with hearts of gold, while NSYNC was perceived as the more approachable and friendly group. This rivalry, fueled by both the media and the bands themselves, created a division among fans that lasted for years. By the early 2000s, the boy band craze began to wane, and both groups disbanded, marking the end of a golden era in pop music. While all members of both bands attempted solo careers, it was Justin Timberlake who emerged as one of the most successful artists of his generation. The Backstreet Boys reunited in 2005 and have continued to tour and release new albums. NSYNC, on the other hand, has not officially reunited, despite constant rumors and fan hopes. The rivalry between the bands was more than just a musical competition. It was a cultural phenomenon that defined a generation. Although time has passed and tensions have eased, the legacy of both groups remains alive in the hearts of millions of fans who grew up listening to their music. Metallica vs. Megadeth the history of heavy metal is marked by a rivalry that has transcended generations. Metallica vs. Megadeth. These two bands, considered pioneers of thrash metal, have maintained a tense relationship since their inception, fueling one of the most famous feuds in music. It all began in the early 80s when Lars Ulrich and James Hetfield formed Metallica and invited Dave Mustaine to join them. Initially, the three musicians shared a common passion for heavy metal and established a strong bond. However, 
Mustaine's personality clashes and substance abuse issues soon began to create tensions within the band. The turning point came when Mustaine, under the influence of drugs, crashed the band's van, putting everyone's lives at risk. This incident was the final straw and led to his expulsion from Metallica. Undeterred, Mustaine founded Megadeth in 1983, sparking a rivalry that would shape the future of thrash metal. Both bands launched into the world with seminal albums like Metallica's Kill 'Em All and Megadeth's Peace Cells. But who's buying? The competition intensified over the years, fueled by mutual accusations. Mustaine accused his former bandmates of stealing his songs and solos, while Metallica pointed to Mustaine's inflated ego and personal issues as the main reasons for his departure. Despite attempts at reconciliation, such as the brief reunion of Metallica's original members for the band's 30th anniversary, the rivalry has persisted for decades. In 2015, Mustaine reignited the feud by refusing to authorize the release of a cassette with Metallica's early recordings, claiming that James Hetfield was trying to take credit for songs he had composed. Cardi B vs. Nicki Minaj the rivalry between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj is one of the most dramatic chapters in recent hip-hop history. Both rappers, with distinct styles and personalities, became leading figures in the genre in the mid-2000s and teens, inevitably leading to a confrontation that captured the attention of millions of fans worldwide. The tension between the artists began to build as their careers rose. Through their songs, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj threw jabs and accusations at each other, questioning each other's authenticity and competing for the title of Queen of Hip Hop. The boiling point came in 2018 during New York Fashion Week. At a party organized by Harper's Bazaar, both artists were involved in a physical altercation widely covered by the media. The incident was triggered after Nicki Minaj posted an Instagram message questioning Cardi B's parenting. Following this incident, the rivalry intensified with a series of exchanges on social media. However, a month later, Nicki Minaj called for calm, urging her fans to focus on positive things and to leave behind the negativity. Although it seemed a truce had been established, many speculate that the rivalry never completely disappeared. Close associates of both artists suggest that underlying tension persists and that both continue to vie for recognition and dominance in the hip-hop industry. Noel Gallagher vs. Liam Gallagher The story of Oasis is undoubtedly one of the most passionate and tragic in rock history. Behind anthems like Wonderwall and Live Forever lies a fraternal rivalry that ultimately consumed the band. The relationship between Noel and Liam Gallagher was always tense, marked by personality clashes and constant confrontations. One well-known anecdote recounts that during a tour, Liam, under the influence of alcohol, urinated on Noel's equipment as an act of revenge. This incident, while humorous in retrospect, revealed the depth of the resentment between the brothers. The 1994 U.S. tour was a turning point. Tensions between the Gallaghers became public during a concert in Los Angeles when Liam deliberately altered the lyrics of Live Forever to provoke Noel. The confrontation culminated in a fight on stage and the interruption of the show. Over the years, the Gallagher brothers continued to make headlines with their scandals. Liam did not hesitate to question Noel's paternity of his daughter, triggering new conflicts and exacerbating the situation further. Despite the constant bickering, Oasis managed to maintain commercial success for several years. However, the frequent and increasingly violent fights between the brothers jeopardized the band's continuity. Finally, on August 28, 2009, Noel Gallagher announced his departure from Oasis, ending one of the most significant bands in British rock history. For years, speculation about a potential reunion has remained, and while the obstacles are numerous, hope persists. Only time will tell if Noel and Liam will overcome their differences and reunite to delight fans with the music that made them famous. Mariah Carey vs. Jennifer Lopez the relationship between Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez has been the subject of speculation and rumors for years. Although there has never been an official confirmation of an open rivalry, certain incidents and statements have fueled the idea of a silent competition between these pop divas. It all began in 2000 when Mariah Carey, in an interview with a German channel, responded curtly and seemingly disinterested to a question about Jennifer Lopez. 
Her response, in which she simply claimed not to know the other singer, sparked the first suspicions of a possible tension between them. However, in 2014, Jennifer Lopez surprised everyone by publicly stating that she held no grudge against Mariah Carey, and that it would indeed be a pleasure to meet her. She even confessed to being a fan of Mariah's music, and that My All was one of her favorite songs. This statement seemed to put an end to the rivalry rumors, but doubts persisted. The following year, during the Billboard Music Awards, Mariah Carey was seen ignoring Jennifer Lopez's performance, which reignited speculation about a possible feud. In 2016, when asked again about Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey reiterated her claim of not knowing her, generating even more confusion and fueling theories of a silent rivalry. Arnold Schwarzenegger vs. Sylvester Stallone The history of action cinema is marked by a rivalry that captivated millions of viewers. Sylvester Stallone vs. Arnold Schwarzenegger Two titans of the big screen who, for decades, competed for the title of Hollywood's most charismatic and box office action star. Today, Stallone and Schwarzenegger are inseparable, sharing the screen in franchises like The Expendables. However, in the 80s and 90s, their relationship was anything but friendly. At the peak of their careers, both actors saw themselves as the ultimate action heroes and fiercely competed for the audience's favor. Stallone, with his iconic roles as Rocky Balboa and Rambo, had solidified his status as a top-tier action star by the early 80s. Schwarzenegger, on the other hand, burst onto the scene with roles like Conan the Barbarian and The Terminator, quickly becoming a formidable rival. The rivalry between these actors was so intense that it transcended the screen. Stallone has admitted that during that time they despised each other, and their competition was fierce. Schwarzenegger has also acknowledged that the rivalry was so great that they couldn't be in the same place without some kind of tension. The cause of this rivalry was clear. Both actors were vying for the same space in the industry and wanted to be considered the best. Additionally, action cinema was booming, and both Stallone and Schwarzenegger were major beneficiaries of this phenomenon. Over time, however, the rivalry softened. Both actors matured and realized that constant competition was counterproductive. They also recognized that they shared a common passion for action cinema and that together they could create something even greater. Today, Stallone and Schwarzenegger are great friends and collaborators. They've shown that it's possible to move from being fierce enemies to becoming allies. Their friendship has been an inspiring example for many, proving that even the most intense rivalries can be overcome with time and maturity. Bad Bunny vs. Annuel The rivalry between Annuel and Bad Bunny has been one of the most talked about topics in the urban music industry in recent years. Both artists, considered two of the top figures in the genre, have engaged in a competition that has generated great anticipation among their fans. About three years ago, Annuel gave an interview to Billboard in which he spoke about his relationship with Bad Bunny. While acknowledging that they both share great mutual respect, the Puerto Rican artist said there is a healthy competition between them, even comparing it to siblings competing to prove who is the best. Annuel claimed that this rivalry drives them to constantly improve and offer their best to their followers. However, the rivalry between the two artists has gone beyond mere statements. At a concert in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Bad Bunny threw a hint that many interpreted as a response to Annuel's comments. The Bad Bunny stated, I will always make music for you and will always be Benito Antonio Martinez Ocasio from Puerto Rico. This statement, where Bad Bunny mentioned his full name, was seen as a way to reaffirm his artistic identity and set himself apart from his competitors. The tension between the two artists intensified even more when Annuel, in a clear message aimed at Bad Bunny and other peers, recommended that they not release new music in the weeks leading up to his album launch. The Puerto Rican artist sought to prevent other artists from overshadowing the release of his new musical project. Elvis Presley vs. John Lennon Despite John Lennon's admiration for Elvis, considering him the pioneer of rock and roll, their only personal meeting turned out to be a disappointing and revealing experience. The meeting between these two musical icons, which took place at Graceland in 1965, turned out to be anything but a moment of camaraderie exposing deep ideological and personal differences. During the visit, Lennon, known for his pacifist and anti-war stance, 
felt deeply uncomfortable finding Elvis's mansion decorated with items and messages supporting Lyndon B. Johnson, the then President of the United States. Johnson was a controversial figure due to his foreign policy, particularly his escalation of the Vietnam War. Lenin's criticism of the war and his admiration for leaders like John F. Kennedy were well known. Therefore, the contrast between his ideals and Elvis's political stance was shocking to him. It's said that he even openly expressed his disapproval, which may have angered the king of rock and roll. The animosity between the two musicians deepened over time. Elvis, a staunch patriot, viewed the Beatles and their music with suspicion. According to rumors, the FBI had a 663-page file on Elvis, detailing his opinion on the British band, explicitly considering them a threat to American culture, accusing them of promoting values contrary to traditional ones and negatively influencing youth. Madonna vs. Elton John The rivalry between Elton John and Madonna is one of the most famous and enduring in pop music history. Over the years, both artists have been involved in a series of public confrontations that have fueled public fascination with their lives and careers. The origins of this enmity date back to 2002, when Elton John harshly criticized Madonna's song, Die Another Day, composed for the James Bond film, Die Another Day. The British singer called it the worst song in the 007 saga's history, sparking one of the first public battles between the two artists. However, the peak of tension came in 2004 during the Q Awards. While receiving an award as a songwriter, Elton John lashed out at Madonna, questioning her ability as a live performer and criticizing her use of playback. These statements caused a great deal of controversy and solidified the image of both artists as irreconcilable rivals. In 2012, the tension flared up again when both were nominated for Golden Globes in the Best Original Song category. Madonna won, leading to a new wave of comments from Elton John and his entourage. Elton's husband, David Furnish, posted a message on Facebook criticizing the Academy's decision and suggesting that Madonna had not earned the award on her own merit. Although the message was later deleted and an apology was issued, the incident made it clear that the rivalry between the two artists was still alive. Despite numerous public confrontations, it seems that at some point, both stars managed to smooth things over. According to some reports, the artists ran into each other by chance at a restaurant in the south of France and had a friendly conversation that helped ease the tensions. Since then, they've avoided making negative public comments about one another. Maluma vs. J Balvin the rise of these singers on the global music scene in the early 2000s-10 led to inevitable comparisons between the two artists. Hailing from Medellin and with similar musical styles, the media and fans constantly pitted them against each other, fueling a supposed rivalry. J Balvin has acknowledged that in those early years of fame, insecurities and the desire to stand out led him to fuel this rivalry. However, over time, both artists matured and managed to overcome these differences. In later interviews, he expressed admiration for Maluma's talent and admitted that, in retrospect, he finds the idea of two Medellin artists competing in that way amusing. He also pointed out that music is an art to be celebrated and that there is no room for destructive rivalries. The reconciliation between the two artists became evident with several musical collaborations, including Kepena and Porfa. These tracks, which quickly topped the charts, demonstrated that unity is powerful and that music can be a bridge to overcoming differences. Taylor Swift vs. Katy Perry The relationship between Taylor Swift and Katy Perry is a clear example of how friendships in the entertainment industry can take unexpected turns. For years, both singers were seen as inseparable, sharing special moments and supporting each other in their careers. However, in 2014, a series of events triggered one of the most talked-about rivalries in the entertainment world. It all started when three of Taylor Swift's dancers left her Red Tour midway to join Katy Perry's Prismatic Tour. Swift interpreted this action as a betrayal and felt that her friend had influenced the dancer's decision. Swift's response was swift. In her album, 1989, she included the song Bad Blood, a track many interpreted as a clear reference to her feud with Perry. The lyrics describe a woman who tries to sabotage her career and friendships. Perry, in turn, responded with Swish Swish, 
a song with a lighter, more playful tone, but still interpreted as a retort to Swift's accusations. The rivalry between the two singers intensified over the years, with each artist's fans taking sides and fueling the dispute on social media. However, in 2018, to everyone's surprise, Katy Perry extended an olive branch to Taylor Swift by appearing in the music video for Swift's song, You Need to Calm Down. In the video, both singers hug and share a moment of camaraderie, putting an end to years of speculation and rumors. The reconciliation between Swift and Perry was celebrated by their fans and the music industry in general, showing that even the most intense rivalries can be overcome. Moreover, their reconciliation served as a message of unity and tolerance in an increasingly polarized world. Daddy Yankee vs. Nicky Jam In the late 90s, the Latin urban music scene witnessed the rise of a powerful duo, Los Cangres, consisting of Daddy Yankee and Nicky Jam. Together, they revolutionized the genre with hits like En La Cama and Donde Están Las Gatas, establishing themselves as one of the most popular duos of the time. However, this promising partnership was cut short by Nicky Jam's personal issues, including addiction and legal troubles. Faced with his partner's instability, Daddy Yankee made the difficult decision to pursue a solo career. The release of his album Barrio Fino in 2004 marked a turning point in reggaeton history, catapulting Daddy Yankee to global fame and making him one of the genre's leading figures. Meanwhile, Nicky Jam was at a low point in his career, caught in a spiral of self-destruction. The disparity in their professional trajectories intensified the rivalry between the two artists. At the height of his success, Daddy Yankee released the song Santifica Tus Escapularios, which many interpreted as a critique of Nicky Jam's excesses and reckless lifestyle. This song only fueled the discord between them. In response, Nicky Jam claimed that his former partner had intentionally sabotaged his career by pressuring promoters not to book him. Although this account was never officially confirmed, it further stoked the rivalry between the two artists. However, fate had other plans. After years of battling addiction and working hard to rebuild his career, Nicky Jam made a spectacular comeback. His renewed success and the maturity gained by both artists paved the way for reconciliation. Ultimately, Daddy Yankee and Nicky Jam reunited on stage, showing the world that the past could be left behind and that friendship and music were stronger than any rivalry. Carl G versus Rosalia. In recent years, the Latin music industry has witnessed intense speculation about the relationship between two of its biggest stars, Carol G and Rosalia. Rumors of rivalry between the Colombian and the Spaniard intensified when accusations of plagiarism arose from fans and critics, who pointed out similarities in the musical style and visual aesthetics of both artists. In particular, many noted Rosalia's influence on Carol G's meteoric rise. The tension between the two singers became even more evident when they stopped following each other on social media, coinciding with the release of Carol G's hit music video, Tusa. This move was seen by many as confirmation of a rivalry between the two. When asked about her relationship with Rosalia, Carol G remained diplomatic, stating that while she admires the Spaniards' music, they do not have a close friendship. The Colombian singer emphasized her good relationships with other female artists, but made it clear that her connection with Rosalia is limited to a professional relationship based on mutual respect. For her part, Rosalia has kept a low profile in response to these accusations. Despite the fact that her fans have reignited plagiarism rumors several times, especially after Carol G won the Billboard Latin Award for Female Artist of the Year consecutively, the Malamente singer has avoided getting into any public feuds and has chosen not to comment on the matter. This approach has been interpreted as a strategy to avoid fueling the rivalry and to prevent a public confrontation. So now it's your turn. Which of these rivalries would you like to see reconciled? Share your thoughts in the comments. Here are two options that you'll surely love. 